Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macro video looking at some of the key factors influencing consumer spending in the UK economy. We'll be using up-to-date information to see the direction in which consumption might take in the months ahead. Consumer spending is easily the biggest component of aggregate demand, so an understanding of factors affecting household spending on goods and services is crucial when analysing and evaluating different stages of the economic cycle. So here are some of the key factors driving consumption, spending on goods and services. I've listed eight of them here. Real disposable income and the real wage from jobs, uh, the interest rate paid on savings and charged on loans, uh, the level of employment and unemployment in the labour market. Another factor is the availability of credit in financial markets alongside changes in household wealth, in particular property prices and perhaps share, share valuations. Price expectations can influence spending today or tomorrow, particularly at times of deflation, as can the size of, as well as the age structure of a country's population. And overall consumer confidence, the state of sentiment, be it pessimistic or optimistic, can also make a big difference in people's decisions about how much of their disposable income to spend. So we'll just spend a few minutes looking at some of these key factors. Disposable income is crucial to any discussion of consumer spending. We weigh, the way we calculate disposable income is that we take original income before any intervention, for example, wages from the job or perhaps some interest from savings. We then add on cash benefits, such as the state pension, but we take off direct taxes, including income tax and national insurance, and local taxes, including the council tax. If we do that, we get a figure for disposable income. If we look at the UK data, not adjusted for household size, that the original income is just over £37,000 a year, just over 6000 paid in cash benefits per household, but direct taxes and local taxes take off over £8,000, which gives a disposable income not adjusted for household size of just over £35,000 a year. Clearly there are big variations in that, particularly at the bottom of the top of the income scale. So this chart shows disposable income and spending per head in real terms per capita with divided by the population. And the gap here between disposable income per capita and consumer spending per head is the level of saving per capita because disposable income can be spent or saved. So post-recession, of course, there was a, a drop in real household income and spending. Just in the last three or four years, that figure has started to go up. But of course, a lot of that's been financed by people reducing their savings. You can see the gap between income and spending per head is getting smaller there. Interest rates clearly affect the decision about whether to save and whether to take out a loan. So we look at the interest rate on savings. That could be highly liquid current accounts with an instant access account it could be a time notice account where you give up your savings for a period of time perhaps at least a year or so uh, typically what we look at is the real return on savings rather than the nominal interest rate and then of course there's the cost of taking out a loan it could be a mortgage on a property it could be a credit card interest rate it could be a, a personal loan a secured or unsecured personal loan typically when interest rates are low the demand for savings goes down people save less and the demand for credit goes up, vice versa when interest rates start rising. And at the moment, interest rates on savings are particularly low. Current account, less than half a percent on average. In fact, that's less than inflation, isn't it? So in real terms, the, the return on saving is negative. And even notice accounts offer less than 2% rates of interest. If you can get a mortgage, mortgage is typically quite cheap at the moment, if you can get a mortgage, less than 2%. But credit card interest rates way higher, 20% on average and unsecured bank loans, well, a bit higher, nearly 4%. So interest rates have a big effect on consumption. So to the labour market, this chart shows the employment rate, percentage of people aged between 16 and 64 who have a job, they're in paid work. You can see the effect of the recession in 2009 there, the big slump in employment, particularly amongst male workers. But since then, the employment rate's been rising. It's currently at a record high of 76%. But note here the closing gap between male and female employment rates. There is a perceptible difference in the rise in female employment rates there. Unemployment, of course, has been falling quite sharply over the last five or six years. It's now below 4% of the labour force. 
obviously debate about how accurate these figures are, but the question needs to be asked, how much further can unemployment fall? Clearly, as more people are in work and less people, fewer people out of work, then that should drive higher consumer spending. But what matters is the real wages of people who have a job. And as this chart shows, if you look at average weekly earnings expressed at constant 2015, 2015 prices, who was real wages, follow the green line there, total pay, real terms stagnated for many years after the Great Recession. They're slowly recovering, but they may remain well below where they were or what they might have expected to be without the last recession. The gap between regular pay and total pay typically is, is caused by things like overtime payments and bonuses uh, to people in particular jobs. Wealth is another factor. Wealth is a factor driving consumer spending. Here's a chart showing average household prices in the UK. Uh, house prices, sorry, property valuations now well above £200,000. Obviously, the fall in the recession, then the flat bit, but they've been rising quite sharply since. But do you notice that there's a slowdown in house price inflation here? Let's turn this data into a percentage 12 monthly change, and you can see that the rate of growth of house prices is clearly slowing down and has been actually for the best part of three and a half years. Will house prices fall, for example, in 2020? And if they do, what might that do to consumer spending? Population growth. I mentioned there was another factor near the start of the video, and here's a chart showing the annual growth of population for the UK using mid-year estimates. And uh, the population of the UK in mid-2018 was estimated to be 66.4 million people. 1970s actually had the slowest growth of population. There was a fall in the birth rate and net outward migration. And then 2003, 2004, population growth picked up quite sharply, in part because of the big increase in net immigration as 10 new countries joined the European Union. But population growth actually in 2017 was the slowest growth for some years. But clearly a rising population does tend to stimulate increased consumer spending overall. We can't mention consumer spending without thinking about confidence, animal spirits, here's a little image of Keynes, John Maynard Keynes, of course, the, fa the founding father of modern macroeconomics, who talked about the uh, volatile, unpredictable level of animal spirits, the state of optimism or pessimism. So confidence drives decisions, behaviour, and confidence, of course, is built on expectations. Lots of squiggly lines to follow here. Follow, first of all, the red line, which shows a kind of index, if you like, of confidence in the wider economic situation, people thinking ahead for the next 12 months. And as you can see in recent times, there has been quite a dip in negativity about people's perceptions for the economy. But also notice the green line, which is people's own expectations regarding their own personal financial situation. And that has held up pretty much over the last three or four years, perhaps helped by rising employment and um, cheap mortgages, for example. If the green line takes a big dip, then we know we're probably in for a recession because once people become deeply worried about their own financial situation, they will definitely spend less, hopefully save more and try to repay debt. So the follow, follow the consumer confidence data pretty closely. It's a good, perhaps, lead indicator of where the economy is likely to go. One of the other big issues is saving. Households are saving, at the moment, a smaller proportion of their disposable income than they have for many, many years. Typically, households typically spend between six and eight, sorry, save between six and eight percent of their disposable income. That figure has now collapsed to around four percent. By some measures, it's even lower than that. Perhaps this this period of very low interest rates on savings has persuaded people that they're really getting no return from saving money. And this is all linked, I guess, my final chart, to the economic uncertainty of the age. Uh, one of the reasons why perhaps consumer spending growth will slow down in the next year or so. Partly people may run out of savings. Partly interest rates may start to rise, who knows. But crucially, uh, people have a lot of uncertainty about where the economy is heading. There's lots of policy uncertainty about Brexit, about future taxes, future taxes, about trade wars, about the 
possible risk of recession in other countries. The economic uncertainty is one of the features of the age. So we've been through in this short video some of the key factors affecting consumer spending. Hopefully that's useful as part of your macroeconomics. And thanks for joining in this video.